between joy omo shalewa and oluwa sheun ayo so we are commencing the service right now i want us to rise on our feet as the first hymn will be announced and uh, the processional hymns praise the lord as we are starting this service of uh, solemnization of holy matrimony between joy omo shalewa ojenira and oluwa sheun ayo onolapo we are singing the professional hymn baptism number 47 great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, therefore Let's sing joyfully and brighter.
Please let's pray together. Father, in Jesus' name. We say thank you very much, Lord God Almighty, because of this moment that you have brought to be by your mercy. Thank you, Father Lord, for mercy that you granted us in our journeys down here. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the church. We thank you, Father Lord, for the families. Thank you for all of us that in your own infinite love you have brought us for this service. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Eternal Lord, we are committing the worship into your hand, the marriage. From the beginning to the end, Lord, we pray that you take absolute control in Jesus' name. Lord, we plead that at the end, as we look back, we have every reason to glorify your holy name in the name of Jesus. For those who may still be on their journey, Lord, we pray that you grant them mercy in Jesus' name. Make it accident-free, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, eternal Father. To you be the glory. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. The best man and the best lady, please have your seat. We are on page five. Exhortation, charge, and declaration. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here in the presence of God and this congregation to join together Joy Omo Shalewa and Oluwa Shewayo in holy matrimony, which is an honorable estate instituted by God himself, signifying unto us the mystical union that is between Christ and his church. The holy estate which Christ adored and beautified with his presence and the first miracle that he performed in Canaan of Galilee, and which he commanded in the Holy Scripture to be honorable among all men, and should therefore not be enterprised, nor taken in hand unadvisedly, lightly, or wantonly, but reverently, discreetly, soberly, and in the fear of God. Duly considering the following for which matrimony was ordained. Firstly, marriage was ordained for help and comfort, which husband and wife ought to share with each other, both in prosperity and adversity. Secondly, marriage was ordained in order that the natural instinct and affection implanted by God should be allowed and directed aright, so that those who are of God and his estate would continue daring in pureness of living. Thirdly, marriage was ordained for procreation of children who should be brought up in the fear of the Lord and for the praise of his holy name. It is to this estate of matrimony that joy almost shalewa and oluwa sheun Come now to be joined. Therefore, if any man can show any just cause why they may not be lawfully joined together, let him now speak, or else hereafter hold his peace. Well, I think the, the person has not been born. In Jesus' name. I require and charge you both as you will answer on the day of judgment. When the secret of all hearts shall be disclosed, that if either of you knows of an impediment why you may not be lawfully joined together in matrimony, you do now confess it, for be you well assured that as many as are joined together Otherwise, then God's words does allow are not joined together by God. 
Neither is their matrimony lawful in his sight. I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediments why I, Ayo, may not be joined in holy matrimony to joy or Mashalewa. Amen. I do solemnly declare that I know not of any lawful impediment why I, joy or Mashalewa, may not be joined in matrimony to Holua Shemuayo. Praise the Lord. Please have your seat. Our next hymn is taken from our Baptist hymn now, 502. And that's on page six of our program, Pamphlet. The voice that breathed over in him. We be on our seat as we sing spiritually, joyfully, but silently.
Praise the Lord. Praise the living Jesus. This is the very reason why we are here today. To witness the joining and blessing of Joy Omo Shalewa and Uluwa Shiwayo. I want us to pray in our hearts that God will perform this miracle right in our presence in the name of Jesus. So, Uluwa Shion, you're, you're going to do your first assignment. I, we don't know who is under this veil. So, you will open it so that we can verify that it is the person that you said will be here today. So, release the program with your handkerchief. All right. Is own exercise. Praise the Lord. Confirmed. Confirmed. Uh, he said authentic. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oluwa Shehu Ayo. We thou have this woman to be thy wedded wife, to live together according to God's law in the holy estate of matrimony. Will thou love her, comfort her, honor her, and keep her in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keeping thee only unto her for as long as ye both shall live. I will, by the grace of God. Amen. Joy, Omo Shalewa, will thou have this man to be thy wedded husband? To live together according to God's law in the holy estate of matrimony, will thou obey him, love him, honor him, and keep him in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others, keep thee only unto him for as long as ye both shall live? I will, by the grace of God. Amen. Who giveth this woman to be married to this woman or to this man I Kayo de or Janina do on behalf of my wife, Morenike, and the entire family of Ojenina, in the name of God the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's put our hands together. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God will take care of her. I, Uluwa Shinwayo, take thee, Joy Omoshalewa, to be my wedded wife, to have and to hold from this day forward, for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish, for as long as we both, li we both shall live according to God's holy law, and thereto I give thee my truth. Amen. I, Joy Omo Shalewa, take the Oluwa Shionhayo to be my wedded husband, to have and to hold from this day forward for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health, to love and to cherish for as long as we both shall live according to God's holy word and death to I give thee my fruit. Amen. Amen. What token of love have you? Oh, wait, you put it together. Then when they are, the top, the top, the top. 
pastor. We have the ring bearer and the little bride here. Thank you very much. We pray for you that God will take care of you. In the mighty name of Jesus. If Jesus tarries, one day, when you are old enough to do this, it shall be your turn. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Please, let's put our hands together for them. So you can go back to your seats. Thank you. Let's pray over this ring. Father, we thank you for this ring, a symbol of endless love. We bless this ring and we sanctify it for use for your children. And we are praying that as long as you see this ring, you will be joyful. Amen. You will not experience sorrow. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that at no time will you remove this ring and throw, you, throw it out angrily in the name of Jesus. Amen. Bless, O Lord, these rings which we bless in thy name. And grant that they who shall wear them may abide in thy peace according to thy will. And ever live in mutual love for as long as they live through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Joy of Moshalewa, with this ring I do wear, with my body I do honor, with all my worldly goods I do endow, in the name of the Father, Amen. and the name of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's say better, Amen. Amen. Joy homo shalewa. Uluwa shion hayo. With this ring I do wed. With my body I do honor. With all my worldly goods I do handle. In the name of God, the Father, Amen. the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Let's appreciate what God has done. Praise the Lord. They are just beaming with smiles. Praise the Lord. For as much as Oluwa Shewayo and Joy Omo Shalewa have consented in holy wedlock and witnessed the same before God and this congregation and have given and pledged their trust to each other and have declared the same by giving and receiving of rings and by joining of hands as we can see now, with the authority vested in me by the marriage ordinance of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, and as a minister of the gospel, I pronounce that they be husband and wife in the name of God the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What therefore God has joined together, let no man put asunder. 
Amen. So you can now hug or kiss your bride or wife, whichever one. Don't allow your face to push you. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray for them now. The gift we are giving them now is a gift that cannot expire. It cannot be outdated. This gift we are going to give to them will be with them for life. And that is prayer. Can we rise as we pray for them? I want us to stretch our hands to the two of them as they kneel. And because you have come to rejoice with them, I want you to speak into their lives, different areas of their lives, spiritually, maritally, financially, morally, emotionally, biologically. Just a word. Bless them. Those things you, you want to see after now and going into the future, let's, let's speak into their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Our Father and God, the author of marriage, we thank you for bringing joy and Uluwashiun together miraculously. Thank you for the conviction so strong that has brought them before you this morning and in the presence of this cloud of witnesses. Thank you for their birth, their upbringing, the investments of parents in their lives. And that what they are doing today is bringing fulfillment to the parents. We worship and adore you. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. Lord, we have all committed them into your hands. As they begin this journey of marriage, we are praying for you. God, we order your steps. God, we establish you. God, we cause you to be fruitful. You will be friend to each other. You will not be enemies. In the name of Jesus. The grace to be patient. The grace to understand one each other. Lord, you will give unto them in the name of Jesus. The Bible says two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. As from now, you will have good reward for your labor in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in all labor there is profit. As you labor at home, at work, you will make profit. And you will eat of the fruit of your profit in the name of Jesus. Nothing will separate you in the mighty name of Jesus. Could there be any cause running from your family, from your ancestors that may want to trouble this marriage? Every cause, every word, every demon, whatever it is, this morning we bind and destroy such causes in the name of Jesus. The flow of such negative influences that may want to come into your life, we stop the tap now. Amen. We command that the tap will dry up. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. And from this morning, as you kneel on this pulpit, 
we are plugging you into a new ancestry. An ancestry of the Lord Jesus that will bring joy, that will bring peace, that will bring fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus, you will not walk in darkness. You will not walk alone in the mighty name of Jesus. And so we sanctify this marriage or this wedding unto God, his glory, and his service in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Please let's be seated. Let's sit down. Praise the Lord. As the couple continually down before the altar, they are going to receive more blessings. So, my children, refer to this hymn, prayerfully sing it. And uh, you pray for yourself along with it. We are singing from Baptist Seminar 501, O Perfect Love. Well, the couple on, on their nail, everybody will be on the seat. Let's sing softly, softly.
Yes, Corporal. I think you can sit down. <laughs> Our scriptures reading this morning is taken from two texts. We'll be reading from the book of Luke, the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 16, verses 13 to 15. That will be Luke 16, 13 to 15. And the second one will be from 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. 1 Timothy 6, 9 and 10. So I take the first one. That's Luke 16, verse 13. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And the Pharisees also, who were covetous, heard all these things, and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. But God knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. So let's go to the second one. That's Second Timothy chapter 6, verse 9. But they that be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hurtful lusts, which drown men in destruction and perdition. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. May the Lord bless the reading of his words in our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen.
let's put our hands together for Jesus. Amen. Please, you may be seated. I like to congratulate our brother, brother Sean, and our sister, sister Joy. The day has finally. <laughs> I can explain why you are so happy, at least. And I also want to congratulate the father of the bride. Mama Ojeniro, congratulations. And Mama Ojeniro, congratulations. Baba and Mama Onolapo, we rejoice with you. Luru Kojesu, Nkoto Daba, Elojinyo Mario, we rejoice with you. Amen. I want to thank our father and the Lord for this privilege. Thank you very much, sir. This morning, I like to share briefly on the topic. I, because our, our sister is a teacher, so I, I'll make it like a, a course in the university. So I call it Marimatics. Marimatics 726. And the course title is Marriage and Mammon. All right? We have seen all kinds of marriages. Some lasted for just one week, some a year, some 10 years, and some till eternity. We have seen all kinds of storms in marriages. And uh, we can mention so many of them, ranging from the spiritual spiritual storms, and so many others, so many others, in-laws, all kinds of matters. Now, I discovered that there are two, two different kinds of these storms. Some are very vocal, visible, while some are very silent, all right? You hardly notice that they are the cause of that storm, all right? You hardly notice that they are there, the issues. You hardly notice that they are there. It's just like uh, uh, when you see someone, you know, suddenly start to put up attitudes. And then, uh, just like people will say, only on Kurabi, only Kuruno. let me put it that way. Maybe that will be clearer enough. And then, I'm sure not many people will come out openly to say that actually it's because of money. I'm misbehaving. All right? But yet, I have discovered that it can be a major issue in marriage. So I'll be sharing briefly on this subject of mammon and how it affects Christian marriages. Then later we we'll talk, uh, I'll just prescribe a few spices, all right, that... Uh, we help your marriage. Amen. Let us pray together. Eternal Father, we thank you this morning. Thank you for this joy we are celebrating this morning. We ask, eternal God, that you who instituted marriage, you will go with this once. Even right now, as we share your word, oh God, let it go forth with power. Let it help these people when and where it matters in their journey. Thank you, eternal God. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. While I was preparing this morning, this poem came to my heart, so I'm going to, no, I just, you know, I wrote it, and let me just recite it. You know, we are celebrating love, and this is one of the ways we spice up our marriages. So I'm teaching you in a way to write poem. Endlessly tender, the soft moonlight is shining on the deserted sandy beach, calming my workaholic, restless mind. Deep in my soul, it seems too far to reach. Please don't wake me up. Tiny seashells, whiter still than the sand, reflect the moon and seem to be on fire. The beach becomes a nightly heavenly land with sparkles that move my heart and inspire. Just please 
don't wake me up. Fluffy clouds in the dark expanse are drawing, painting and shouting, love, drawing humbly in the sky, immense, love so deep, love so sweet, love so genuine and void of struggle or trouble. Please allow me more sleep because I'm enjoying it. The gentle waves, a lovely song, whispering peace, peace, peace in the bracket of love. It goes on and on forever long. The inside of my heart is now at peace. Only don't try to wake me up. And then suddenly appears a beautiful lady or girl. Appearance brings light. As my ministers hope, a gap to splashes affection. A sonorous voice echoes grace. Please allow me more sleep. My skin enjoys this nightly breeze. All the worries of the day I cannot find, they melted away. What remains in the night is love, pure love. Even if you wake me up, I will not respond, but sleep on. Wake up, my love, from your long sleep. So says the love I had a long sleep with. Touch my heart and tell it's okay. Feel my hair and pick the love stain. Your love so true and without strain. Let's sleep more and journey on in this love train. Amen. This is one of those spices in our love life. I believe some men here, you have written love stories too. You have written poems. All right? But I don't know where the pen is today. I hope after today, you'll pick it up again and write a love poem for your beautiful wife. Love is a beautiful thing, and we thank God for it. It has changed many, and it's still changing so many. So I welcome you to the institution called marriage. Brother and my sister, very soon after now, you collect a certificate. You know, it's a very funny institution where you get the certificate even at the beginning. But, you know, I used to tell my friends that even when you get that, that certificate you are getting at this beginning is one that is being given to you on trust. All right? Daddy is giving you a certificate very soon on trust. Okay? And the trust is the fact that you will pass. How many people trust Jesus that these ones will pass? All right. And so shall it be in Jesus' name. So you'll be given a certificate on trust. We will not request for that certificate again. It will be yours for forever. Now, in this institution, I have discovered that there is only one person so far that has called a asterisk, and that is the author himself, God. There are, however, some people I call tutors. I call them supervisors. These people have gone so far in this, I mean, in, in, the, in the journey. They have spent a long time in the institution, 20 years. If you are 20 years in marriage here, yeah, let, let me see your hand. 20 years. Thank God. I know the Baba and the, 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 the father and the, the mother of uh, the, the couple of today. You are one. 30 years. Can I say 30? Do we have 50 here? 50 years. 50 years in marriage. We celebrate you. We celebrate. Please let us clap our hands together for this one. Amen. Now, there are so many courses you are going to be taking in this institution. Brother, brother Shion, are you with me? And Sister Joy, all right? My, the message is direct, directed, all right, at you, or to you rather. So please pay attention. You take many courses in this journey, okay? But one, I want, to, I want you to, you know, pick today is what, what I called marriage and mammon and it's marimatics seven to six. One of the common questions asked in marimatic courses, don't worry, I will send you this, uh, this message later, is if there is a perfect marriage. That's one of the questions people ask. 
if there is a perfect marriage, I believe you can have a great marriage, people of God, but not a perfect one. You can't have a perfect marriage, but you can have a victorious marriage. You can have a marriage that is continuously getting better and improving on a daily basis. Please don't assume that the moment you go into marriage, you are going to have a perfect marriage from the very first day, even to the last day. You may not have that result. You are going to have an improving marriage. Improving marriage is about conflict resolving and conflict transforming. Trouble in your marriage simply means that you are not, you are human. Let me just put it that way. When you see trouble in marriage, it's simply showing that you are human. You are not superhuman, sir. You are not superhuman, ma. Now, the issue of money in marriage is silent because it's a spiritual one. And money itself don't get to make noise about their presence, but they can affect many things in the family. Mammon, biblical terms for riches, often used to describe the debasing influence of material wealth. The term was used by Jesus in his famous sermon in Matthew chapter 5. You also see it in Luke. Medieval writers commonly interpreted it as a, as, a, as a demon, evil, or God. Since the 16th century, mammon has been used to negatively, negatively describe the blind pursuit of wealth. I discovered that there are two kinds of people on earth. The first category those ones are the people I said they control money. There are people who control money. This category of people, spending is, their, is the last thing for them. Spending money is always the last thing. It always comes last. They are contented with whatever they have, these people. They save and they are very prudent. They are very prudent. The second category of people that exist here, they are people that are controlled by money. The first category controls money. The second category does what? They are, sorry, they are controlled by money. Spending is the first thing for this category of people. And they all, they all run into lack. Common thing about them. They are not contented, no way. And would do anything to make money. Now, there are different, all kinds of manifestations of this second group of people. I mean, people who are being controlled by money. Now, let me context, contextualize Luke chapter 16, verse 13 to 15. And then that first Timothy, chapter 6, verse 9 to 10, that we read the other time. I discovered the following. Number one, about people that are being controlled. Okay, sorry. Let me contextualize that first. Then I will mention some of the manifestations of these people. Now, I discovered from that text that, number one, God cares about how we make money. Money made in an ungodly way can never serve you for a long time. You can never be productive with it. Proverbs 13 verse 11 says, money gained by dishonest means dwindles away fast. Number two, appetite for money can be controlled, at least with the help of God. You can control your desire to make money through wrong means. Number three thing I've seen in that text is that the spirit of mammon is a killer demon. It's a killer demon. And that's one of the greatest discoveries in the world today. In the world of crime today. All right? In the world of crime, you mentioned power, right? You mentioned sex. You mentioned money and all. But I discovered that money will always come first. You need money to carry out crime successfully. 
So money, 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 money. And the same thing is affecting marriages. What are some of the visible manifestations of mammon? When mammon is in charge of a home, what are some of the things you will likely be seeing? Number one, you see pride. When either the husband or the wife is being controlled by money, okay? Your love, everything is woven around money. When money is available, it's when the house is at peace. All right? Some of the things you will likely see. Number one, pride. The one who makes more money tends to be arrogant. I mean, sometimes they're abusive in the process. Number two, unfaithfulness. When one is being controlled by this demon called money, mammon, there is this natural tendency for people, I'm sorry, they, they, they exhibit unfaithfulness. And note here that there is this natural tendency for people who get possessed with mammon to be unfaithful, especially in financial and sexual matters. In a bit to want to express how greatly liquid they are, they fall into the den of adultery. Number three, anger is not far from them and abuse. A man that is under the control of mammon gets angry at the slightest provocation. Scarcity of money can make a man to misbehave. He gets angry just so easily. He will complain about everything and anything. And if care is not taken, he will become abusive in the process. Another thing that you will see in this kind of relationship is that there will be dissatisfaction. Nothing else, especially for a woman, nothing satisfies a woman whose husband is not satisfying financially. A woman that is being controlled by this demon called mammon. You may not be able to satisfy, all right, in any other way. Number five. There will be love scarcity. For couples whose marriage is woven with this cord supplied by mammon, their love suffers when there is scarcity of fund. With them, it is for good, for stay, for better, for enjoyment. But when it is worse, what happens? Eh? Please, run. Now, how do we wage war against this demon called mammon so that our homes people of God, so that our homes can enjoy peace. Number one, appreciate God for the little he gave you. James 1.17 says that every good and perfect gift comes from who? Thank God for it. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God for it. Number two, waging war against this demon called mammon, we have to practice what we call naked without shame. Naked, no shame. This is more of a decision than a status. It's a major decision you have to make, sir, and my sister. That I'm going to be open. A man who opened his pocket, I have discovered a man who opened his pocket to his wife will open every other thing to, him, to her. That may not be true in all cases anyway. But sometimes, when you are faithful financially, all right, when you are open financially to your wife, you may likely, most likely, be open in every other areas. That is arguably anyway. But I encourage you to be open, all right, to be open to your wife financially. Financial openness involves keeping nothing from your spouse. Keep nothing, all right, keep nothing. I know a man who asked so much, but the wife didn't know about it. It died suddenly, and then the woman, he asked, in fact, he didn't, and to make a matter, the, the matter worse, he didn't allow the woman to walk. Yet, the woman did not know his worth. 
The man has properties. He has so many things. He took the intervention of some good lawyers to get some of those things that the man actually, you know, uh, you know, acquired, you know, outside the, the, the consent of the woman to give to her. So you don't have to keep anything. Be open. Be open. Be accountable and be responsible, ma. Okay? One of the reasons why men don't want to be open is that we feel that our women are not prudent. All right? They are reckless. So please be accountable and be responsible. Don't repeat the errors of our parents, bro. They believe all a woman knows is money, but it's not true. When you have such mentality, you, there will be a limit, all right, to your openness to your spouse. That's the truth. My sister, be prudent, and he won't find it difficult to keep his ATM with you. Discuss every financial matters. All right? I beg you, discuss every financial matters and trust each other. Please. Physical nakedness is also very important. My sister, there is nothing to hide from tonight. You understand? There is nothing. Bro, open everything up. It all belongs to your spouse. Amen. Mm -hmm. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Now, how do we spice up our marriage? Number one, be appreciative. Be appreciative. People grow and get better in appreciation. No normal human being does not feel good when appreciated. All right? Appreciate every little thing in this marriage. It goes a long way. Little thing like food. All right? She prepares the food. Even when it is salty, do you know you still need to say thank you? Sir, do you understand? Even when it is salty, still say thank you. Because the same one that is preparing one that is salty today, all right, has prepared, you know, better one. So say thank you. Be appreciative. Every little thing. Do kind actions. Do kind, number two, do kind actions. Yes, sir. In the, 20, in the 21st century marriage, we help our wives in the kitchen. You know, one of the things we discussed the other time is we must not repeat the failure of our parents, right? Some of our parents believe that the, the kitchen is the office of the woman. That is it. But ask our mothers if, I mean, how they feel, all right? The man does not lift a finger. Well, anyway, that's not uh, my concern. 21st century marriage, we help our wives in the kitchen, bro. Hmm? Kind action here. Yeah. Please. And my sister, help him. Don't help, don't help her on the bed alone. Some men, their own kind action is to lay the bed. It's a gift. When you ask them to lay the bed, they will lay it very well. No, that's not uh, the only kind action you should do, sir. Please help in all ways. Number three, use your weapons well. What are your weapons? You have your hand, you have your mouth, you have your breast. If I'm going to give you a test right now, please, I need a mic for my brother. I want to see, I need a mic for him, please. Okay. Bro, please stand and tell everybody here today, who is stronger physically, who has you know, more strength, more energy. Yeah. No, please, on the mic. Let them hear you. I think I do. You think you uh, do? I believe I do. <laughs> I don't know. All right. What do you use this energy for? Is it to, you know, uh, you know, we, I'm on bound with you, why we let Abi? Hmm? Aha. So God, 
is, uh, God give you that strength, I know, I believe, right? Is it so that you can punish us sometimes? Please tell everybody what you think. Okay. Um, I believe my strength is to protect her, to support her. Please let and us jam our hands together for my brother. He said his strength is actually given so that he can protect her. Yes? And uh, I think most especially to, to uh, complement the area she's lagging behind. Like carrying 50 liters of uh, water? No, no, no. Ah. Okay, carrying for her. Right? You know? Yeah, something like that. If they and you put it on her head? No, no. That's not good to happen. All right. Thank you. Now, one practical one. Your mouth. I want you to use that mouth. You were doing, you were doing gentle, gentle when daddy asked you to hug or kiss your wife. I want you to show us how you will use that mouth. And, uh, you know, please stand, my sister, and let the church be the judge. If our brother will be using this mouth, I believe you are not going to be using this mouth to speak, you know, you know derogatory words and all, all of that to your wife, right? So, please, show us how you may likely, I didn't say you should kiss, but if that is how you are going to use it, please, I want you to demonstrate it before everybody this morning. So, please, 10 seconds. You do, eh, eh. You see this drama they are doing? It's because you are there. Maybe we should close our eyes. Uh, look at them. Please let us put our hands together for these people. God bless you. That is one of your weapons. Use it very well, my brother. Hmm? Use your weapon very well. God bless you. Please sit down. And you see, this one is directed to, the, to our sister. Complain less. All right? To spice up our marriage, we must learn not to complain too much. It kills the joy, the peace, the harmony, the love in marriages. Please complain less. And finally, yield to the Holy Spirit. Always yield to the Holy Spirit. It's our help. In this unique journey. It's our help in this unique journey. Please yield to him. Ask him for help all the time. All right? And he will surely help you. Finally, as I close, a woman was talking to her husband and then she called him baby. Said, baby. You know, there are different names we call our husbands and our pet names these days. You say, ah, baby, right? This man does not have money, okay? And something is wrong with him upstairs because he's being controlled by this mammon. So the woman called him baby. And then he looked at her, how dare you? Me, baby, at my age? And then he was taking it serious, like he was going to even, you know, be, turn abusive. All right. The lady in her wisdom kept quiet. And then later in the day, the spirit of mammon had left the man. And then he wanted to use one of his weapons. In fact, all his weapons. You know, there's a way a man harness all the weapons later in the evening. Abby? <laughs> but you want to use one. But, and in, you know, when, it, when you talk about uh, emotion for a man, it's one straight thing. But for the woman, plenty, plenty corners. So he understood the woman, then he wanted to start. Then he started to touch the wife, who was touching her. And that woman suddenly woke up and she said, Who is that stupid? Or what is that? Who is that stupid person touching me? And he said, I am the one. <laughs> the same one, he called, she called baby. Now answering, let us use our weapon very well, all right? And then don't be controlled by this demon called mammon. The Lord will help you in Jesus. Let us bow our hearts as we pray, people of God. What is going on in your heart right now, people of God? What state is your marriage? 
at this time, sir? Why are you behaving the way you are behaving, ma? Are you here and you know that this message is directed to you? Your home is not enjoying any peace at the moment. And you know somewhere that is because you have given yourself up to the spirit called mammon. It is when you are happy that it is when, when you have money that everybody is happy in the house. You want God to change you today. I will just hand over this mic to our Father and the Lord to pray. Wherever you are, you want to identify with this message. Two calls. One straight, and the straight call is that you know that you are being controlled by this demon called Mammon. And is affecting your marriage negatively. Or you are here, you know that the reason why your husband is misbehaving is because of the money. The Bible says the, the, it is not money that is the problem, but the love. We have attached too much, too passion to love. And then it's causing havoc in our marriages. While all eyes are closed, you know that your husband is in that category. Even though he's not here. Or even if he is here. Or you are here as a man. Even it can be the woman herself. You are being controlled. That's a straight call this morning. Let me just see your hand wherever you are. I will just pray. Then the second call. Is an open one. There is no peace in your marriage for whatever reason. For, you have not identified that reason. All right, this morning I'm just bringing out one of the reasons why storms, all right, rage in the marriage. Christian marriage, yet, but yet you know that there is no peace in your marriage. You want to invite Jesus to that marriage? Our Father in the Lord will just pray with you wherever you are. Let me just see your hand. Just put, if you are not ashamed, might be because of you, God is bringing this message this morning so that your home will begin to enjoy peace. So that the life of Christ, you'll begin to enjoy in your home. Wherever you are, just put your hands up. Let me see. All right. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. Thank you for today. Once again, we recognize that you are the author of marriage. So we commit our lives into your hands. Those of us that are married, Lord Jesus, we will not be controlled by mammon. In the name of Jesus. And this home, this new home, of our brother and sister, Oluwashon and Joy on Olapo, we pray that in the name of Jesus, you will not be controlled by mammon. In the name of Jesus, the Lord will help you and his grace will be sufficient for you in this journey. Father, we thank you. Again, we declare that this home will stand in the name of the Lord Jesus. You will prosper. In this home, you will prosper. In this journey, we say you will prosper in the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Let's appreciate God better in the life of our pastor for that message. Glory be to the Lord. We soon run off. But there are two or three important parts of the program that we must observe. But before we do that, we just want to celebrate God in the lives of the two families that God has graciously brought together today. And we will recognize them. So, and I'll be starting from the family of brother and sister of General. Please rise on your feet. Please let's appreciate God in their lives. This is a milestone, a milestone in their marriage. We appreciate God. I want those who have come, family members, friends, well-wishers who have come to rejoice, can you just also rise as we recognize you, wherever they are? Oh, let's wave our hands to the Lord. Let's wave our hands to the Lord. Let's wave our hands to the Lord. Let's 
glorify the name of the Lord. Thank you for coming. God will continually support you in Jesus' name. Please have your seat. I want to recognize also Daddy and Mommy on all on all Your Ola has increased today by one plus X or one times X. Let's appreciate God in their lives. Now, I want to recognize their immediate family members, their friends, their colleagues, church members who have followed them. Can we also rise wherever we are seated? Let's wave our hands to the Lord, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Thank you for coming today. We appreciate you. God will always stand by you in the mighty name of Jesus. Please be seated. Uh, well, but our general belongs to the sanctuary choir. And I'm sure that that special number was specially chosen, chosen by him. So I want us to appreciate the sanctuary choir for that beautiful number. Thank you very much. Many more of these from the choir in Jesus' name. Thank you. Then, the wife also is a member of the children department. And I can see the HOD. I can see all uh, daddies and mommies in the children department. Can you please rise on your feet as we appreciate God in your life? Please, let's appreciate God in their lives. Yes, these are the ones doing wonders in the lives of our children. And uh, what we have been seeing here in this church has been glorious, very glorious. Thank you very much. God will renew your anointing. He will renew your strength in Jesus' name. I must also recognize the teenage church because joy is a product of the children department and the teenage church. So members of the teenage church, coordinators, if you are here, remember, whether coordinator now or before, can we just recognize you? Where are they? Victor, stand up now. <laughs> are you not representing the teenage church? Please, let's appreciate them. Uh, it's one very big, important part of our church here. We are God is raising godly teenagers. Godly teenagers. Thank you very much. And uh, before I uh, introduce the officiating ministers, I want to recognize members of Ori Tamefa Baptist Church too. Members of Ori Tamefa Baptist Church that are here this afternoon. Please let's shout one hallelujah. Thank you for coming to identify with this family. Thank you. We appreciate you. The Lord will continue to bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, for the ministers on the pulpit here, let me just quickly recognize them one after the other. On this, my extreme left is Dickness Shade Akinola. Please let's appreciate God in, his la in our life. Then sitting next to him is Dickin Tunji Ile Somi, the chairman of the diaconate of this church. Hallelujah. Thank you. God bless you. Then sitting next to him is one of our guest ministers, Reverend Dr. O. A. Oludele, First Baptist Church, Ikiru. You are welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Sir. Then anyway, we are we met, and that is uh, Pastor Debo Daniels. Thank you for coming this afternoon. Thank you. God bless you. So uh, as we round off, you are going to take the closing prayer. Please be prepared. So right now we are going to the announce that the Thanksgiving and signing of the marriage register. The worship team will come to lead us. The ushers will direct us. And as we are leaving our seat to dance to the front, carry your bag in your hand. Check your phone, whether it is still in your bag or your, on your hand. Check your phone. Check your phone. So make sure that you do not leave your bag or your phone or your purse on your seat. Carry everything with you so that there won't be any loss. Don't tempt anyone. Thank you. God bless you.
Jesus. Please let's have our seats. Thank you for this great rejoicing in the house. It shall never cease in Jesus' name. Uh, let me invite the deacon and deaconesses on duty for photograph, please. Yes, Minister, please come and take photograph. Then Pastor David Daniel, please come. Pastor Emmanuel Ekoja, are you around? Pastor Emmanuel, oh, they didn't tell us that you are around. Please come, please come. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. He came all the way from Bori to, to honor this couple. First wedding that we are conducting. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, it's a record one. certificate and just like the pastor remarked you have attended one course there are still so many courses to attend but yet we are giving you a certificate and he said that we are giving you this on trust that you will pass that course and other courses that will come in the mighty name of Jesus so I'm presenting this certificate to you to the two of you in the name of God the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Man, 
please come. The best man. So that's why you are here today. You will help them to keep this. And then when their eyes have come down, before you bid them bye-bye, you hand it over to them. All right? But for now, you just keep it so that it will not get lost. Are you married? Ask. So when do you want to get married? Huh? It's the one that will tell you. All right. <laughs> Please let's appreciate the best man and the best lady. They have done very well. Thank you. Your days will come in Jesus' name. Thank you very much. So we are rounding off now. Let me invite Pastor David Daniel to come and take the closing prayer. Then uh, Pastor Ekoja from Worry, you come and do the benediction. Please come. Uh, we didn't know that you've come. Honest, nobody told us. Yes, sir. Please let's rise as we take the closing prayer. Thank you for your patience. Can we sing this song just for one minute and then I'll close? A shame ye be tetty bearing. A shame ye be tetty I do well. God, our King, the God whose name is Yahweh, the El Shaddai, the Adonai of Israel, awesome God, the mighty God of Israel, the God who orchestrates unions like this, the God who brought Uluwa Sheun and Joy together, we say thank you. For this blessed couple, we say thank you. For this new couple, we say thank you. Lord, Thank you for your presence in our midst. All this last one and a half hours or so, we give you praise. Lord, for the way you have caused this reun I mean, union to go perfectly well, we say thank you. We bless your name forever in Jesus' name. Lord, we declare that the word that has come forth upon their lives, none shall fall to the ground. We speak peace to this home. We speak joy upon this home. Prosperity. The knowledge of God, the presence of God, the glory of God. Lord, you will be their shield all around them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, whatever the enemy has planned concerning this union, we abort it, we frustrate it, we nullify it. Is there any covenant over their lives that is contrary to the blood covenant? We declare it null and void and of no effect in the name of Jesus Christ. We say this union is blessed. In their going out, they are blessed. In their coming in, they are blessed. Your heavens are open. The hand of the Lord rests upon you. The power of God rests upon you. In all that you do, you will prosper. You will flourish. You will blossom. In the name of Jesus Christ, fruitfulness shall be your portion. I say spiritual fruitfulness, physical fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus Christ, material fruitfulness. Fruitfulness all around. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for everybody that came here today to celebrate with them, Celebration shall not cease in your homes. In the name of Jesus Christ, as this program continues with the reception, may we continue to enjoy your presence and your glory in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. We love and appreciate you. From this altar, 
in North Town for Baptist Church. We bless you, joy and shame in, G in, in the name of Jesus Christ we have prayed. Amen and amen and amen. Shall we please lift up our hands? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you his peace. In the name of Jesus. The grace together, please. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your lives and you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we bring this glorious service to a close, we're singing the recessional hymn from Baptist in 18. It's on page 10 of our program pamphlet. Praise my soul, the king of Aaron. Yeah.